up dudes? How's everybody doing today? Hope you're having a splendid Monday. Let's kick it off with a little Beethoven's Symphony number no. 3 in E B major, shall we? Nothing like a little raw meat and some raw classical. How's everybody doing? What's up, Blood is Life? Sith Unit Sith. Welcome to the show. Today we got raw grass fed ground beef, 100% grass fed. We have uh, Miller's Farm, raw, unsalted, 100% grass fed butter. Mm. This is what we're going to do. We're going to eat raw meat, answer some questions, talk about stuff, talk about conspiracies. talk about some conspiracies today guys How about that what's your favorite conspiracy my favorite conspiracy is that you have to cook your food in order to not be sick yeah this is some good beef man color to it <clears throat> pretty good amount of fat in there but I still supplement butter with it as a uh, fat and cholesterol is a big part of my diet yeah cholesterol is a big part of our uh, bodily functions man big part of our brain function it's essential you deprive yourself of cholesterol you're basically giving yourself a mental illness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you said conspiracy, more like spoilers alert. Exactly. Germ theory is probably my favorite conspiracy. There's a lot of religious conspiracies that I like too. Re uh, organized religion is um, very interesting to look into the history of it, the development of it. What's up, Joaquin Texera? How you doing, man? Good to see you again. I look healthy as a bear. I'm feeling healthy as a bear, man. Never felt healthier in my life. My microphone okay? Is the music uh, is at a good level? Mic check, music check, one, two. <clears throat> the myth of the danger of cholesterol, yeah, that's a big one. How fat is bad for you, it's pretty stupid. Um, most people don't accept we are carnivores. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't. It just comes down to brainwashing and, and uh, lost culture. You know, we've been raised in a society to where we were taught to eat vegetables and grains. And that's another conspiracy. The powers to be that are controlling our food supply and controlling the, the economy through the banking system and all the money. Um, they want us to eat shitty cheap food because that's what they make money on so you know um the people that control our society and the government they don't make money off of us buying grass-fed beef straight from the farmer like i do so they're gonna tell you you gotta eat seven to eleven grains grain servings a day and you gotta eat four to six servings of vegetables every day otherwise you're gonna get cancer and it's stupid because they want your money it comes down to greed <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Sithunet says you need to have kids, a good woman. I do have a good woman, man. I got a fiance and we're uh, getting married in April and we're gonna have, God willing, a lot of children.
Yeah, humans grew their brain because they ate cooked meat. That's another funny conspiracy. I believe more in the thought that we grew our brains because we started eating mushrooms, magic mushrooms and psilocybin mushrooms than cooked food. That makes more sense than cooked food. What's up, Christian? How you doing, ma'am? Yeah, the viral conspiracy is a is a big one. Viruses are contagious, germs are contagious. Viruses are gonna kill us. We're gonna kill everybody. You have to get a magical shot in order to prevent it. That's pretty stupid. Yeah, bugs just don't seem really, that doesn't seem effective for nutrition. If you were starving, yeah, I'd eat it, but other than that, no. Dark Bizzle says, congrats on getting engaged. Thanks, I appreciate that. It's a big, big move. Uh, if you're making a Faraday cage, you don't need a grounding mat. You don't even need to ground it. It still works either way. But I still sleep on a grounding mat just to get some extra negative ions into my body. I'm doing great, Christian. I'm doing fine, man. Life is good. Yeah, fire is a destroyer. It does the same to our food, exactly. Put fire to anything, what does it do? It, it completely destroys it. <clears throat> Talk about the religion, the conspiracy. Oh, it's so deep, man. I mean, you want to talk about the fact that <clears throat> most religions most likely stemmed from people having <clears throat> spiritual experiences, uh, messing with like plant medicines and chemicals. Um, and then they were eventually outlawed to prevent people from accessing these these realms. And it was hijacked by, you know, Roman Catholic Church in order to control the people. You know, that's just Catholicism and Christianity. Or how about the fact that they call a guy called Jesus, who I support, I believe in all his teachings, but they call the guy God, which is um, ridiculous. How can a man be God? Did he create himself? So there's that. Um, they're all becoming corrupted. Religion, religion basically started out as people having spiritual experiences and then um, it started to envelop itself into power structures and, and people uh, controlling other people through money. It's deep, man. But organized religion is, um, it's pretty much a scam, dude. The kingdom of God is within you. Psilocybin mushrooms are not toxic, blood is life. You're watching too much, uh, you're watching too many Sferia videos, buddy. <clears throat> Christian says, every time I eat a potato, it makes me feel strong, but surely it's bad because it's a plant. I don't understand. I don't think so. All plants aren't bad. That's, you're buying into like a false binary there. 
Oh, meat is good. Plants are bad. It's not true. Plants can be medicines. I think certain plants are okay. Um, I don't have any problems with potatoes. There may be some oxalates in there or something like that, but you know, all disease doesn't stem from food. You know what I mean? Some people react to certain things worse than others. Like, um, it all depends on the st status of your gut and how you were created. Some people have more degenerated DNA than others, so they can't process certain foods. But uh, I've never had a problem eating potatoes at all. Prime B says, yeah, I agree. Jesus Christ was legit, but his teachings were corrupted. For sure, man. Yeah, Jesus was, was super legit. Everything he said was true. And uh, he's got some great, great things to learn. But, um, yeah, it was totally hijacked. I do believe in God, yes. Sithunet says not talking about all the people dead because of religions. Oh yeah, religious war, dude. All the all the people warring between each other, between religions, killing each other over religion. That was definitely created by the devil. You know? The devil loves it, man. He's down there rubbing his hands because we got all these religions and everybody's killing each other because of them. In the name of God. It's ridiculous. What's up, Nero? Well, you can achieve spiritual experiences through just fasting and sitting alone in isolation. You don't need drugs or food or anything like that. But there's certain things that can be used as tools to get you there faster. <clears throat> I've never eaten sweet potatoes. Um, I've never been a sweet potato guy. So I don't really mess around with it. But I do eat uh, like russet potatoes. I never liked the taste of sweet potatoes. I never really understood that. Well, yeah, religion is like, it's so interesting because it's like, what if you were born on an island isolated from all the other religions? So, since you were born on that island and you were never introduced to Jesus or the Bible, that means you're going to hell? It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Why would God do that? Because he wouldn't. Because it's man doing that. It's man creating all these things. <clears throat> Man is like a tool used by evil, used by like uh, the devil to create evil in this world. We also create disease. But we blame the disease on germs and, and nature and God. But it's actually created by us. What's up, Andy? Do I eat fruit? Yeah, I eat uh, one fruit per day in season. Blood is life says I don't believe in good or bad. It's only your personal perspective. Um, I don't know about that. I'm not really wanting to get into a theological debate or anything. But I think in this realm, there is obviously uh, good and evil. Maybe in the higher realms it doesn't exist, but in this realm it does. It's pretty obvious to me. I have not tried weed since I quit. <clears throat> I quit about uh, almost three years ago. It'll be like three years this month, I think. And I haven't went back. To be honest, man, I kind of find it repulsive now. <clears throat> Just the idea of being high 
and uh, under the influence of of uh, cannabis. It just uh, once I get away from it, I just I don't want it back at all, you know. I'm actually completely sober now. I don't even drink like occasionally. I used to have like a couple drinks like every few months or something. I don't even do that. Sunbathe, yes. I sunbathe as much as I can with my shirt off outside. What's a higher realm? <clears throat> well, like there's realms that we live in here where we're being controlled. I believe there's obvious, like there's like a, a duality going on. There's like a dual forces at play. And I believe it's <clears throat> can be described as like good and evil or right and wrong. Or you could call it truth versus um lies you know that's one way i like to look at it the best like if you don't want to look at it like good and evil you got to look at it like truth versus lies right there's obvious truth and there's obvious lies you know that's not personal perspective it's the easiest way to explain it like this is ground beef right this came from a cow that's the truth right you can't say that's my perspective that's actually the truth. Now, if you said this was chicken, that would be a lie, right? <clears throat> and that's what's going on in our world is that there's um, truth versus lies. And that leads to evil and destruction and, and pain and death when you start pushing lies and hiding the truth. And that's what social media does, by the way. That's what these channels do. That's what YouTube does. They hide the truth and they push lies. And it's evil and it misleads people and people get hurt because of it. Um, so I, I believe in, in the higher realms, whereas there's possibly different dimensions that exist that are broader than the one that we're in now. It may not be like um, as bi a binary like that. Such as, for example, like you could say there's a God and a devil, but if you say everything is God, then the devil is God, right? But if there's a devil, the devil is created by God, right? So like, you could say there's a God and a devil ruling over this realm, but above all of that, there's like a source or a creator that created all of that. So that means it's not like a binary anymore. It's all like one thing. It gets super complicated, dude. And like, I'm not going to try to attempt to act like I know exactly how all this shit works, but I have a basic understanding, I believe, of what's going on. What do I think about pagan religions? I haven't looked into them, really. Um, I'm actually, I just ordered a book about, it's called um, The Devil's Pulpit. It was recommended by um, Christopher Gardner on one on Benjamin's streams. And it's about how this guy discovered that the Christian religion was actually stemmed from a lot of pagan religions. I'm sure you guys have heard about that. Like the son, the son of God actually means, you know, the son. Owen just talked about this in one of his recent streams about how December 22nd, like throughout the year, the sun, the arc of the sun gets like lower and lower and lower to where we have less sunlight every day until it gets to like December 22nd. And then it eventually, it stops going down, but it also doesn't come up anymore. The arc doesn't go up for like three days. So basically it's called like the sun going in its tomb. And then on December 25th, it comes back out of its tomb and the sun starts arcing up again and you get more and more sunlight per day so that's like exactly like it sounds like the same exact story of what the christians talk about when they talk about how jesus went in the tomb and for three days and then he came out you know resurrected it's like really interesting how that all could have stemmed from basically pagan worship of the actual sun
blood and life says, I believe in unity. Life and death is the same coin. Yeah, I believe there's different, it's fractal. It's really complicated. It's like, what, in what dimension are you talking about? You know, are you talking about this dimension? Are you talking about the broader dimension that created this dimension? There's multiple, we live in multiple dimensions. So, but I do believe in unity as well, but possibly in the, the higher dimensions. But down here in this little human world with our little tiny human pea brains, I believe there's a duality going on. I believe everybody has a duality going on internally as well. There's a battle going on inside. Jordan Maxwell, I'll check him out for sure. It takes courage to speak out against religion, man, because we're taught that like we should worship religion instead of worshiping God himself. And to speak out against it, you're blaspheming and you're potentially going to burn in hell. You know what I mean? So I was indoctrinated into Christianity and I still believe in all of Jesus' teachings and everything, but I was indoctrinated into the religion as a young kid. I was an altar boy and I participated in the services and everything. And, <clears throat> you know, I was taught that you're going to burn if you sin, if you don't ask for forgiveness. Um, and I do believe that to a certain extent that you're going to suffer if you don't um, repent, especially if you realize that what you're doing is wrong and you continue to do it. That's where I think it gets things can turn bad for people. But if you're doing things that are wrong unknowingly and you don't know about it, then that's not necessarily like a sin because you just didn't know any better. You weren't taught any better. So, but yeah, it takes courage to speak out against uh, like organized religion and things like that. I have heard of Westworld, yeah. Yep. In our realm, what's the battle? Well, I think, I think it's a battle, honestly, of truth versus lies. That's the easiest way to explain it without getting into religious, um, terminology truth versus lies man what is the truth you know this channel is all about truth this is all about you can eat raw meat and not get sick in fact you're going to be healthier than you've ever been in your life people don't know that's the truth they're taught the opposite they're taught raw meat will make you sick it's gross um it's barbaric it's stupid you know this is my channel is all about destroying lies and people don't see it that way. A lot of people don't. They maybe think I'm just doing this for attention or whatever. But there's there's a deeper point to why I'm doing all this. Or why God brought me to this point in my life to where I'm doing this. You know? It's not... This isn't about nutrients, man. <clears throat> nutrients is just a material, materialistic view of health and life. You know? Oh, you need nutrients. Nutrients are going to save your, save your life. It's a small piece of the puzzle, you know? This is about navigating the world, navigating the lies, figuring out who's lying to you and, and who's not. Because this world is a web of lies. I mean, we're constantly being fed lies and lies and lies. And it takes courage to speak out against them because people will mock and shame you and they'll try to cancel you and... and They'll be mean to you and say terrible things to you, you know, <clears throat> but 
our battle is the same battle as Jesus's battle was, you know? That's why the story of Jesus Christ is so incredibly profound. And that's why he's like the most famous guy of all time. Because his story is symbolic of the story that we still live today. That every man lives today. And it is that once you wake up and realize that we're navigating a world of lies, um, if you are the man that has brave enough to step up and speak out against it, then you will be essentially metaphorically or literally crucified for it and killed. They will try to physically kill you or they'll financially kill you or socially kill you. Nowadays, that's what happens is they debank you and they try to socially kill you and kick you off of platforms. But it's the same thing that we're doing here on social media trying to get the truth out is the same thing that like Jesus is trying to do. He's just trying to explain how, you know, spiritual things work. Truth and light and love and compassion and forgiveness and all that stuff, how that's so important. And I think we have a general understanding of what's going on with that now, but people just need to adopt it into their life. What's up, Jeff? What's up, Wes? They worship the sun because when Nimrod was killed, he reincarnated as a sun. And his wife, Semiramis, became pregnant from the rays of the sun, so it was an immaculate conception like Jesus. That's really interesting, man. Amber says, uh, the snail chick I chat with on her chat and sometimes tried steak tartare and it freaked her out. I say it was a mater. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Raw cod liver oil. I'm not into the uh, cod liver oil anymore. I'm not into the omega threes. I think there's um, there's a lot of evidence coming out that omega threes are actually like not that great for us, and it makes sense because omega threes are something that's being pushed by the mainstream nutrition people all the freaking time. Get your omegas. Get your omega threes. Blah blah blah. It's all about just having a balance of omega-3 and omega-6s in your body, and you'll be fine. Um, but this whole thing about supplementing omega-3s and just pounding omega-3s in your body, it's not good. Look into it. Follow Extreme Health Radio, his podcast. It's my dog. These guys are fasted. They've been fasting for a couple of days. What's up, dog? Say hi to the to the crew. But yeah, I would chill out about on the cod liver oil. Amber Lance says uh, everybody lies and their ego won't accept they were lied to. Yeah, it's just hard to break down. Like when your brain is built, if you look at your brain as like a house. And the foundation of the house was laid upon lies. And you're living in that house your whole life. It's hard to realize that, like, the foundation was, was it, it's crumbling. It's, it lies, you know? And it's hard for people to, when your brain is built on lies, and then you need to use your own brain to figure out that it's made of lies, it gets very complicated. People sometimes can't dig their way out of it. Sometimes it takes, you know, my theory is, is it takes someone in your life that you truly trusted uh, to break your trust, such as a parent or an authority figure, um, for you to see that um, people are flawed and humans themselves don't know the truth all the time, including your parents. Once you see that, then you start to see how all the authority figures in the world that are trying to tell us things are, they are also wrong about a lot of things too. So, but there's a lot of people that just can't fathom the idea that their parents were wrong um, and maybe taught them some things that were not right. And also um, that the, all the authority figures in the world are just human beings and they're flawed as well. 
Like when they say human beings are flawed and make mistakes, that includes everyone, everybody, including the so-called religious figures that we have. So that's why it's all about tapping into just directly through the source to God, which is possible. You can do that. Uh, you just you just connect straight to God and skip all the authority figures and all the religious texts and uh, get your information from there. I mean, it's all inside you. Do I live next to the Christmas story house? What do you mean by that? Iridology is cool. Iridology is cool. I like it. I take pictures of my eyes every year or so just to see the changes in my eyes. They seem to be getting... I still see a little bit of green in there, but people say they're blue. I think it just depends on the lighting. But they're very clear. I think iridology is really interesting. How your eyes are connected to your ner nervous system and every organ in your body. And if you have some injury in your body, it shows up actually in your eye. Bam says lies built on lies. Oh, dude, it's a, it is. It's lies built on lies. It's a big giant web. Everything is a web of lies and then we all get stuck in it and sometimes people can't get untangled and figure out what the hell's going on. You know? Like, wait a minute, okay. <clears throat> like, we don't have to cook our food? Okay, so we were lied to about that. So then what does that say about germs? Are we being lied to about germs? What about viruses? What about parasites? What about, what is going on here? Do we actually need vaccines? Like, wait a second. And then you're like, okay, so the people that were teaching us this shit, they didn't know what they were talking about. So that's the, all the education institutions. So those people are fucking lying to us. So the education system is lying to us. So that's all crap. The public school system, that's all garbage. Um, and those are the people educating all of the doctors. So all the medical institutions are garbage. Um, <clears throat> and then you have like money, the financial institution, like our banks are all owned by the Federal Reserve, which is like a private business that just prints money on a printer and sells it to the government with interest. So they're making money on money that they print and then they sell it for interest, which the government can never pay back because there's not enough money in the world to pay back the interest. Like what the hell is going on? So money is garbage. Money is a bunch of lies and scams. Money is stupid. So money is stupid. Doctors are stupid. Um, education system is stupid. Uh, religious, a lot of organized religion is garbage. They just want all your money. They just sing and like they have bands and they just like play rock shows and they just pass plates around and get all your money. Um, it's pretty stupid. Pretty stupid stuff. So you're like, what do we have left? You know what I mean? What do we have left? So once you wake up to everything, then you realize that everything's all messed up. It's all broken and it's all made of lies. Okay. So then you start to get black pilled and you start to get a little depressed and you're like, man, everything's all messed up. But that's the point of the whole evil forces of the world doing this to everything. Cause it wants you to become distracted and disheartened and to lose your spirit and to realize everything's broken but it's not. There's a lot of things that are still beautiful that are still true. And that's why you have to focus on what's good, true and beautiful. And you have to focus on, uh, family, love, um, you know, working for your family, having children. It's all really as simple as that, you know, starting a family, getting married, supporting a family, loving a family, teaching them what's right. And that's the only way to fix everything 
is to create your own tribe and create your own army and then raise them and then teach them the right things. And then they will go out and do the same thing with their children and they will resonate throughout the world with the truth that you taught them. And that's how you change is you change it basically one child at a time. The reason the world's so messed up is because it's just a bunch of children that weren't raised right. You know, it comes down to that. <clears throat> You're not going to change the world by making YouTube videos. You're not going to change people's minds. That's really something that I think there's higher forces out there that are in control of that. Yeah, fiat currency. Yeah, I mean, it's the same. Yeah. There's no value in the dollar. Just stupid. The true value in the world is in family, having your own land, having your own food, owning things that help you support your family and keep them healthy and protect them. That's where the real value is. The real value in the world is like peace, having peace with everything. <clears throat> yeah, the destruction of the family unit. I mean, that's, yeah, that's all a big push. They want to destroy the family unit because that is the road to peace and actual wealth is through your family. I almost fell for it. You know, I'm 40 and I'm just getting married. I almost got lost in the, in the riffraff. Cause I was taught, you know, you were a real man goes out and <clears throat> serial dates women and, you know, doesn't settle down and tries to get with as many women as possible. And you know, you're a badass if you've been with a lot of women. It's all bullshit, man. Yeah, clothing is... Yeah, we have plastic polyester clothing. Everything that I wear, for the most part, like 98% on my skin is uh, cotton. This is cotton under here. This got a little polyester in it. I'm not willing to throw this away because I love this thing, but I wear it over cotton. Polyester tip um, generally doesn't touch my skin. Polyester is really bad for us, for sure. So, we're eating fake food, we're wearing fake clothes, we're worshiping fake gods, whether it be your priest or a Bible, that's not your God, you know? We're watching fake people on the internet. You know, I'm not really in the room with you. I'm just like on a camera in some different dimension. We're always on our phones, staring at our phones in a fake dimension, in a fake world, in some other world in here. How many children would I like to have? <clears throat> I think like five would be a good, good number. If I had unlimited money, if I had unlimited money, I would probably have multiple wives. Um, hope my fiance isn't watching this, but we've already talked about this. I've told her that I would never have multiple wives because it financially just wouldn't work out. But if I was like a millionaire and if I hadn't met my current fiance, um, I would probably have multiple wives and have like 20, 30 kids for sure. Mm -hmm. 
What's up, Franz? How you doing there, mate? By the way, if anybody ever wants a consultation, get a hold of me. Email me. 88668 at protonmail.com um, I'm still doing consultations fairly regularly. I usually do maybe one or two every weekend. So. Do I believe in monogamy? Um, in some cases, yes. In some cases, no. Uh, for the most part, I am a monogamous person. Um, but I believe there's certain times where um, multiple wives would be necessary, especially if there's like, there's a um, projected statistic of there's going to be like 46% of women between like 22 and 40 something are going to be childless in the next like 10, 15 years. So there's, that means there's going to be a lot of women not able to have children or that can't have children. And there's going to be like an abundance of uh, men and like, um, what I'm trying to say is, is there's going to be women, <clears throat> more women out there that are looking for like strong men and there's going to be not a big selection of strong men. So some women are going to have to share the same man potentially. And I think that's where polygamy came in. Today I had uh, raw ground beef. I got some squid in my fridge. I might eat for, uh, for uh, dinner. Octopus is really good. <clears throat> yeah, if you ever need to do another one, Andy, just hit me up, man. I'm uh, I'm pretty open. I haven't gotten like extremely busy with consultations. Like, I do them all on the weekends. I tend to do like I'll do one on Saturday or one on Sunday, and sometimes one on Monday. Every once in a while, I'll do one on Saturday, but I try to push them on Sundays and Mondays. But I'm just very chill chill with it, and I schedule them out a week or two in advance, and I just do like one or two every weekend. But I share my wife with other men. No, that's not how it works. Women are limited to like a certain amount of babies they can have, whereas men can have like a million. Well, you might look at it that way, Amber, but I don't think I'll do. And like I said, there's certain situations that I think would call for that. Maybe not all situations, but if it came down to like, the whole point of this is we're, we're pushing forward the human race. And if it came down to it, and women needed, or men needed like multiple women for wives in order to procreate and create more children, then I think God would be okay with that. I charge, for my consultations, I charge 50 bucks for an hour, which is very low compared to what most people charge. A lot of people charge 100, some people charge $200, so I keep it super cheap for people that just can't afford expensive consultations and we can talk about anything you want. Anything I've learned over the last five years in, in my life, but mostly over the last five years from all the books I've read, food, down to nutrition, health, exercise, EMFs, mental health, spiritual health, family, anything. We can talk about anything because I've definitely been through a lot in my life and I can help help people with a lot of things, get more towards a balanced perspective, but grounding, getting outside in the sun, um, a lot of different things, a lot of different avenues, disease prevention, I 
I do eat pork sometimes, yeah. For sure. <clears throat> Blood is life says 25% of what God is charges exactly. And I'm going to give you like a more balanced perspective than him for sure. I've got a lot more uh, life experience than that guy. Um, cool. Yeah, just let me know, Andy. You know where I'm at, buddy. It would be cool to follow up with you. Amber Lance says war and famine would call for that. Right. And I mean, it just depends on what kind of war you're talking about, though, you know? Like, right now we're in a spiritual war. We're in a holy war. We're in a war against the family, you know? People are becoming impotent and unable to have children because of medications and the clothes they wear and the foods they eat. And it's getting a little crazy. Yeah, I'd definitely talk about conspiracies and consultations for sure. I would love to talk about that. I mean, I'd feel bad charging people to talk about conspiracies, but I would, because it would be so enjoyable, but I just have to for my time, you know? I think 50 bucks is like super reasonable. Doesn't Tufano charge like 300? Yeah, that's what I'm telling you guys. Like I'm, I'm basically giving away consultations for $50. So, and I'm able to do that because I just, I want to keep them low for the people that need it really bad and don't have a lot of money <clears throat> and also um as long as i don't get buried with consultations and i'm not like i don't have people backed up uh i'll, I'll keep it low like that do i have a top five books yeah check out my instagram page it's called primal book club I get this question all the time. I get it so much that I actually created a book club and it's got all my books on it that I recommend reading. But top five would probably be Dissolving Illusions by Dr. Suzanne Humphreys, We Want to Live by Ajahnus Um uh, Invisible Rainbow by Arthur Furstenberg. Um, Let's see, two more. Uh, another good one is How to Become Schizophrenic. That's a really good one. Um, check that one out. That's very interesting. It's about a guy that uh, got schizophrenia and then he overcame it and talked about how he basically got it from like abusive parenting. And it's about how everything we know about schizophrenia is bullshit. That's another conspiracy, guys. Like the whole schizophrenia thing. What they try to tell you that what schizophrenia is and what it's caused by, they don't know what they're talking about at all. Um, so yeah, How to Become Schizophrenic by Mark, I think his name is Mark Wolin. W-O-L-Y-N-N. Another good one is one called It Didn't Start With You. Um... Then there's Vaccines, Autoimmunity, and the Changing Nature of Childhood Illness by Dr. Tom Cowan. Uh, Contagion Myth by Dr. C Tom Cowan. Nutrition and Physical Degeneration by Weston Price. That's another good one, Eddie. Um, yeah, start with those. Would I still eat raw butter if it had salt in it? If it's the only raw butter you can get? Um, yeah, I mean, fat is so important. I probably would, yeah. I did that at the very beginning. You gotta get your fat in, dude. I mean, you'll die without fat. Try to get, if you can't get the, if you can only get salted butter, then try to get like raw beef fat. Amber Lance, easy on the caps lock. We've had this discussion before. Easy on the caps lock there, Amber. Um, what do I think about IQ tests? 
they're interesting, but it's just, it's just, uh, I mean, it's interesting, but, uh, it's obviously not 100% accurate. Yeah, get a bookcase. Get a bookshelf. I got like hundreds of books that I haven't even... Oh, probably dozens I haven't read. But... I got a giant bookcase, man. I got so many books. Can I reverse kidney failure by eating raw kidney? I don't know, ma'am. That's a good question. I've never seen that happen. I mean, I think the idea is to eat like raw kidney and things like that your whole life to in order to prevent kidney failure rather than reverse it. But it would definitely be worth a shot. I don't, I don't see how it could hurt, you know? Oh yeah, politics. We didn't even talk about that. Oh, that's all bullshit. What do I think about engaging in politics? I think it's retarded. I used to be into it. For a very, very short time in my life. Probably like two, three years ago. You guys probably remember if you've been watching me for a while. I was a Trump supporter and all that stuff. And then he started pushing lies and vaccines and, you know, he's obviously got handlers that are controlling him. And, so I realized it's all crap and it's all just designed to divide everybody. Like the real war isn't Christian versus Muslim. It's not Democrat versus Republican. It's not black versus white. It's not carnivore versus vegan. That's not the real war. <clears throat> the real war is the class war, which is the elite rich people controlling the middle class and the lower class. That's what the real war is about. And they create all these other wars to distract you from realizing that they're just behind the scenes siphoning all the money away while we're over here on the internet bitching about black people or white people or Christians or Muslims. Um, and uh, they're over there just getting rich off of us, crying about this stuff. It's really stupid. That's what politicians are doing too. Politicians aren't going to change your country. They're not going to change your world. Like I said, the only way you can change your, your country and, and, and the world is by changing your family and changing your children. Raising children, right? That's like the only way to do it. Got to start with yourself and then create a family, <clears throat> which is your tribe. And then they create a family and then they create a family. And then I have like an army, army of truth. Notice a lot of people get salt headaches, Jeff. That doesn't happen to me, but I know it does happen to people for sure. Blood is life says I don't believe we can win. You? <clears throat> if you don't believe you can win, then you won't win. If you believe you can win, you will win. What if you, what if that was, what if I told you that exactly green ghost, green ghost just said exactly what I just said. It's in your mind, dude. If you don't believe you can win, then they have already won. 
We are in a spiritual war against wickedness and principalities in high places. This is not a physical war that we're in. We're in a spiritual war. Everything being pumped through the TV screen and your radio and everywhere is meant to dishearten you and distract you and make you worry and make you doubt and make you fear. If you ignore all that and you don't let it worry you, you don't let it make you doubtful and you don't fear, then there's no way they can win. They can't make you fear. You know, you, you only allow that to happen. Broadcasting spells through the TV, exactly. It's all TV. Owen Benjamin is a master spellbreaker. I am merely an apprentice, but I do break spells. And I've been breaking spells for a long time when it comes to germs and food. And it's huge. It's not just about, like I said, trying to be some badass, like eating raw meat. Look at all my bones and blood. Look at me, I'm such a badass with my skulls and bones, man. It's not about that. It's much deeper. You know? We're being lied to. And the germ theory deception, I think, is one of the biggest deceptions of all time. Next to a lot of the uh, religious lies that are being pulled out there. How do you go straight to God? Isolation, man. Isolation is one of the greatest gifts that God has given us. You need to isolate yourself from everything and anything, and you will find God there. That's why a lot of people that go to prison and go to jail, they end up coming out with like a strong connection with God, because that's where he is. You can find him within you in periods of isolation and that's what I went through for for years I isolated myself and I discovered a lot of things that way and it's it's suffering at first because you're not used to being isolated you're not used to being away from your friends and family and TV and drugs and food and but once you isolate yourself from all that shit you start to realize uh, you know where he's at a lot of people are scared to go there though, man. They're scared to be alone, so they'll never find him. Meteor Man, what's happening? Natural Human Diet Bear, for sure. I would probably be Raw Meat Bear. <clears throat> What's my number one source for animal fat, butter, raw beef fat? Right now it's raw butter. Uh, but I do like raw beef. If I can get a good source of raw beef fat that's not like suet, I can get suet. <clears throat> yeah, no problem, Daniel. Anytime. Am I happy? Um, I am at peace. I've had more peace recently in my life than I've ever had in my life. And that's all I could ever ask for in life is peace. Um, do I experience joy at times? Absolutely. Do I experience sadness? For sure. But I am at peace with myself. I'm at peace with my family. I'm at peace with my friends and the world. And that's all I could ever ask for, you know? <clears throat> Meteor Man is scrapping copper over there listening to the best stream. Awesome, man. That's uh, very flattering. I know Owen's stream is a billion times better than mine, but I'm getting better. Um, I'm actually practicing piano a lot lately, too. 
wish I could play for you guys. I wish I had a keyboard that functioned over here. Maybe I'll have to get one. It just doesn't sound that good when it goes over like the internet. What's my take on parasites? Have I ever done any deworming protocols? No. My understanding is that parasites only thrive in a malnourished, degenerated body in the first place. So as long as you're healthy and uh, eating like a, a good animal-based diet, you're not going to have any room for parasites to be able to thrive. Um, I've actually gotten tested for parasites and I had none according to them. But um, when I did my Strange Addictions episode, I've said this before on a bunch of my other streams, but they did a test for bacteria and parasites and viruses. And um, they did find something interesting. I'm not going to tell you guys because you got to watch the Strange Addictions episode that's coming out next year. Um, but they found something bacterial in my body that is supposedly bad. Um, and it raises some very interesting questions on, for one thing, why would they find that in my body when I'm healthier than I've ever been in my life? So it's very interesting. It's going to come out in the episode. And it was a surprise to me. It was a surprise to everybody because I had never gotten a test or anything like that ever before. I never had a reason to do it. But, uh... Never done a deworming protocol. Um, what advice would I give to someone in their early 20s who don't really know what they want to do in life? Get a job. Just get a job, dude. And start making money and saving money. That's the absolute first thing you want to do. Especially if you're a man. Depends on if you're a man or a woman. But <clears throat> um, if you're a man, get a job, start saving money, get your own place. That's the absolute first thing you want to do. Get a small apartment, get a car, um, and uh, start putting money away. Um, work two jobs if you have to. I've had to do that before. But whatever you got to do to save money, do that. And then eventually start looking for a wife, uh, whether it be if you're working a job like at a restaurant or something if you're looking for a wife like a restaurant would probably be the good best place to do it and the same thing for women like young women if you're looking for a husband like I think being like a waitress would be the best place to do that but um I would say start looking for a wife and start looking to just settle down and start a family and then everything will start to fall into place from there but eventually you just want to get on your get on your own first and uh, get your own place get your own car and uh, start saving money and become like financially stable to the point to where you can actually support a family. I know it's kind of hard nowadays to do that without the woman working too. I got pretty lucky whereas my fiance is like a really good nanny. So she's able to work and actually work with children. So um, I think that's like a perfect job for a woman honestly as a nanny because eventually when we have children she's going to be able to uh, bring the children like my children with her to work and then they can play with other children and it's going to be like a great situation to where we're going to be financially good <laughs> and she's also working with children which I think is what women do best that's like their their gift from God so yeah just focus on that man and everything will start to um fall into place especially once you get into your mid-20s and 30s you'll start to kind of see your path unfold but just do what's right, man. Stay away from drugs and alcohol and stay away from, you know, womanizing women and just all that stupid shit. And you'll eventually attract a really good woman and it'll work. Can you link us Owen Benjamin? Uh, yeah, so his his Instagram is, uh, I think it's Bean Spillin' Thrilla. So look up Bean Spillin' Thrilla. Thrilla. It's all one word on Instagram. Or you can look up my channel, which is The Natural Human Diet on Instagram, and I'll just DM you his channel. Or uh, also you can go to his website, which is unauthorized.tv. I believe he also has owenbenjamin.com. He's also got a bit shoot, Owen Benjamin on bit shoot, all that stuff. 
think he's on Odyssey and Rumble and all that stuff. Do I get grumpy or angry? Yeah, sometimes. A little bit. Like, my mood isn't... I'm not, like, perfect. I'm not, like, a Zen monk or anything. <clears throat> um, I don't get angry at often at all. Like, I've gotten into, like, just a couple little arguments, you know, with my fiance since I've known her, but that's about it. And I'm never... I never, like, yell, yell or, like, raise my voice like I used to. <clears throat> so I don't get angry like that. Sometimes I get a little frustrated, a little irritated. But for the most part, I am, like... Pretty stable, man. No, it wasn't Camp Leobacter. It was not. I live in Nebraska. My favorite animal milk, um, I think goat milk is probably my favorite. But I've never had like sheep or wild buffalo or anything. I've heard that's pretty good. Hey, what's up, T. Muller? Good to see you. We are doing great. We are healthy. Hope the kids are good over there. What do we argue about? Just stupid shit. It doesn't matter. It's just always something dumb. But how we mop the floor differently. or you know, She mops the floor one way and I mop it the other way. It's always just dumb shit, you know? And we realize that. I'm not stupid. Like, and we talk about it afterwards, you know? I'm like, okay, this is this dumb stuff is going to happen. It's going to come up from time to time. We're still kind of getting to know each other, you know? We met and we... <laughs> yeah, so stuff like that happens. There's just, we think differently. Men and women think differently about things. And they have one way of doing things, we have another way of doing things. And so it's just a matter of trying to get the other person to just kind of see your point of view. And sometimes it's just very hard. And you just kind of have to choose your battles, as they say. You know, sometimes you just have to let the certain things go. I have not tried horse meat. Zulu Alpha Charlie, what's up, man? Um, how does the fiance eat? She eats all raw. <laughs> she did not. Nah, she did not catch me chugging raw meat up milk out of the cart, and she probably wouldn't have cared. Do I think the beef fat needs to be yellow, orange, or as long as it's not suet fat, it's fine? I mean, people eat suet fat too. If you can get it down, you can get it down. It's just very dry. Um, but if you can get it down, I think it's fine. Um, but does it need to be yellow orange for me to go out of my way to buy it? I'm looking for that yellow orange stuff, but it can also be like a cream, like not necessarily yellow or orange, but it's like almost like a cream color, like a little off white. That's good too. So as long as it's like off white, yellow or orange, that's what I go for. And like softer and not dry. That's what I like to buy. But I can't do the, the, the bleach white suit fat. I can't really get that stuff down. Um, <laughs> suit is like eating a candle. It totally is, man. It's the worst. What do I think happens when we die? You know what, man? I don't know. But my mind is open to every possibility, whether it be reincarnation or we become angels or something like that. One thing I do believe in is I believe that time is not linear and it's infinite and we are infinite spirits. I don't believe we actually, our spirits die. I don't believe in that. But it's hard to say. Yeah, grain-fed cow hearts have tons of white fat around their heart. It's pretty crazy, huh? Yeah, I never noticed that. realized that until my buddy Tyler made that post. Um, on Instagram. Mm -mm. 
Are we just energy? I think we're spirits. I think we're spiritual energy. I think we're definitely electromagnetic forces. For sure. Well, I'm probably going to wrap up here in a couple minutes, guys. Get on with my afternoon. This is a good stream. I'm going to retitle this one Conspir Massive Conspiracy Talk. Might be my biggest viewed video of all time. Hope everybody's having a great Monday. Thanks for showing up, everybody, having lunch with me and talking about all this fun stuff. Let's do this again. This is the stuff I like to talk about. Maybe next time I'll bring my keyboard in and play some little music for you guys. Do I ever go hunting? No, I don't know about all the crops are sprayed around here and all the animals are like eating off those crops. I don't know about eating that stuff, man. So I'm, I'm not really sure if I'm going to start hunting around here or not. Do I eat raw beef fat or do you warm it up? Yeah, I eat, I eat it straight up raw. All right, y'all. God bless everybody. Keep eating raw meat. We'll see you guys. I'll try to do another one next week here as the holidays come in.